Hey guys, I'm Jen Banks with Banks Canine Solutions. I'm a dog trainer located in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. And if you would like to learn more about my dog training services, you can visit my website, www.banksk9solutions.com. Uh, this is my dog training question and answer. And the first question we have today is this. I have a dog that is not good at greeting people, jumps in excitement, and too excited when greeting other dogs, and is just too too much for them. How do I help her with people and puppy greetings? Thanks. Um, the very first thing I want to teach a dog is, is how to handle situations where they can't do what they want to do. Um, so I want you to imagine dog greetings and people greetings as like the highest level, hardest thing to do. That's not where we want to start. So think of dog training um, as if you're learning to play a sport. Right, so if you're learning to play soccer, you don't learn by going and playing a soccer game, right? You go to practice, you work with a coach, you work with other people who know the game, know the rules of the game. Um, and once you learn the rules of the game, learn the mechanics of it, get comfortable with it, then you go play the game. Dog training is the same way. So before you can expect your dog to understand what you want when they see people and when they see other dogs, you need to teach them what you want in situations where they can think a lot more clearly. Um, when they're in that excited state, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're super excited and pumped up and then someone's trying to teach you something, it's really hard to learn in that environment. So I do a lot of stuff in the house first. Um, one game that I really like is I have the dog on leash and I throw a treat out of their reach and I just wait, wait until they look at me. Maybe they're pulling on leash and trying to get to it and I don't say anything. I'm just hanging on and then once the dog looks at me, I say yes and I back away. That is an easy way for the dog to start to learn that just because they want something doesn't mean they can always get it. And then I slowly progress the difficulty of the distraction. So maybe instead of throwing a piece of dog food, I'd throw real food or something else the dog really likes. Um, until I get to the point where I'm throwing something out of their reach and they just look right at me and don't even care about it. Um, and that is that is the very beginning. What you're, what you're looking for is, it it's all encompassing. So there's a lot that you should be doing outside of that as well. Um, one of the most important things is that as you're training, um, make sure she doesn't get to greet people by pulling and freaking out, right? So if she, if you're going on a walk and she's freaking out on leash at every person she sees and the people or the dogs are coming up to her, um, that behavior is going to increase. So as you're introducing um, training, you want to cut down on the ability for the dog to perform the bad behavior. So that means, like, if you can't walk around your neighborhood without her pulling on leash, you need to teach her how to pull on, uh, how to walk on leash in your house and in your yard before you go back to the neighborhood. Um, so think simple, easy, fun training exercises and avoid real life situations right now because she's not ready for them. Um, so I hope that helps you get started. And let's see, what's next? Sorry, I got my Facebook blowing up right now. Um, can you talk about your decision to get a second dog or how to tell if your current dog would like a puppy or other dog around? Will their feelings be hurt by not being an only child? Is that even a real thing? No, it's not. So your dog is not a human. It's a dog. So make sure, you know I love you. <laughs> Megan, I love you guys. Um, don't view your dog as a child because that is going to get you into a world of hurt. So first thing is view your dog as a dog because that is the very best thing you can do for your dog. Um, and this is a great question. I'm really glad you asked it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about this in the broader sense as, as far as um, how do you know when you should get a dog, right? Because it's, and I'll, I'll talk about multiple dogs in the house in a second. But anyone who's considering getting a dog, um, the very first thing you want to make sure is that everyone who lives in the house is on the same page about getting the dog. I can't tell you how many times someone approaches me and says they want a dog, um, but their spouse isn't into it or one of their kids is afraid of dogs or something like that. So you gotta you got to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, and if you're preparing for any big life changes um, in less than a year, uh, like uh, you're expecting a baby, you're moving, something like that, 
um, plenty of wedding, anything like that, probably not the best time to bring a, a new dog into the house because new dogs are a lot of work, whether they're puppies or adult dogs, doesn't really matter. Um, so if everyone's on board, um, and, and if you're not expecting any, you know, I, I know life happens, but if you're not planning any major life changes, um, the next thing you would look at is all the animals in the house. So cats and dogs, are they where we want them to be behaviorally? Um, if you have another dog that's having a lot of behavior problems, you want to address those first. So if you're having any sorts of aggression issues, fear issues, or just general house training issues, getting a second dog can complicate that. Um, so if your dog is great, like you're not having any behavioral problems, the next thing you need to ask yourself is, does your dog like other dogs? <laughs> like, like I would assume yes. From the last time I saw her, she seemed to really like other dogs. But I had to be really careful about this with, with Bamba when I brought Moon Pie home. Um, as some of you might know, Bamba doesn't really like other dogs. So I had to be really careful about um, integrating her into the house. And one of the first things I did is I... I um, created a little bit more separation between Bamba and I. So he went back to sleeping in the crate at night instead of sleeping in bed with me. Um, and he also went back to being crated during the day. And because I knew he was really questionable about, uh, about other dogs, puppies especially, when I brought my new dog home, they were kept separated for a few weeks. Um, and I let him dictate the greetings. So if he, if he could show calm interest in her without growling at her I would let the the um, greeting go but if he came up to her and was being really nasty I had to shoo him away and I pretty much kept her away because she was interested in everyone and just wanted to be a rude puppy um, the other thing I did once I brought the new dog home is I made sure that at least once a week I was doing something one-on-one -on -one with Bamba whether it was a class or a training session or a walk or a play session outside probably more than that more than once a week but a minimum of once a week make sure you are giving that that one-on-one -on -one undivided attention to that dog um, if you're if you're looking for a dog actively and you're looking for help in finding the right dog definitely let me know um, depending on what you're looking for, I might be able to, to help direct you to um, a, a foster dog I might know, or a breeder who might be looking to rehome dogs, or a breeder who has puppies, depending on what you're looking for. So certainly reach out uh, when the time comes. So let me see here. Can you guys hear me? Hi. Snoring next to me. <laughs> All right, next question. What is the best way to deal with separation anxiety, specifically when one dog gets upset, loud, vocalizing, trying to follow the other dog when the other one is going outside for a short trip? Okay, so two dogs in the house that are that are overly bonded together. Um, I'm wondering how much time they spend alone in general. So one of the problems I have with two dogs in the house is I'm always doing training sessions when they're both together. Um, so one of the first things I would do is I would separate them during training sessions. Not all the time, but you know, if you can do it, I don't know, three times a week, just to give it a number, where you put one in the crate, work the other, and then swap. That's a nice way to start. Um, and I don't know if she's in the crate when she's doing this, or if she's loose. Um, but one of the most important things to do is don't tell her it's okay, right? So if, you, if you've got a dog who's screaming and screeching, and you're telling the dog it's okay, you're telling them it's okay to act like that. So really I would correct the behavior, whether that's with a squirt bottle or whatever works for her. But that that mental state that they're in when they're vocalizing, the more they vocalize, the more they kind of fuel that mental state. I find in general that the crate, putting them in the crate helps because they tend to be calmer in the crate than they are when they're loose. Uh, so I can get that state of mind that I want a little quicker, which is relaxing um, but that's what I would start to do and you also need to start not bringing them everywhere together like like they need to be separated not all the time but yeah I'm, al I'm almost wondering if the class you're enrolled in would have been better if you were each in separate classes um, because they they need to learn how to I'm assuming it's Dakota that's that's doing this and not shadow um, but they they need to learn how to depend more on humans and, and less on each other um, so definitely try that stuff and let me know how that works and then last question, 
Any suggestions on raw feeding and where to find information on coming up with the best diet for your dog? I've been considering making the switch, but don't know where to find good information on making a balanced diet. Um, yeah, welcome to the club. <laughs> so I started raw feeding last summer and I've learned a lot. I still have no idea if I'm doing it right, but my dogs seem happy, so I'm going with it. Um, basically what I've, what I've learned in the past eight months or so is that there's no right way to do it. Uh, it's very individual, uh, based on the dog. So there's not really like a, a book of, of how to do it that you can buy. Um, it's more about figuring out what works for you and, and your dog. Um, I found a great resource to be, um, it's a Facebook group called Raw Feeders Kicked Out Club. Um, that group is wonderful and I check it pretty much daily and I always learn something from it. And the, the woman who runs it, her name is Kimberly and she's got a, she's got a blog called Keep the Tail Wagging. That's, that's where I started and I've got a lot of great information from there. So definitely check them out and take it slow. Like my, my biggest mistake when starting was I wanted to go from kibble to all raw immediately and it was just really overwhelming. So take it slow and, and realize there's no rush. Just thinking about it is a step in the right direction. Uh, it's pretty cool to hear that you're you're looking into that. All right, you guys. That is going to do it for my question and answer for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I'll see you soon.